This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Glassoff Gang. Tonight, ISIS's Hijra advice to Muslim quote-unquote refugees. Our guest this evening, Daniel Greenfield, a Shulman Fellow at the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Daniel, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me on. Daniel, thank you. Let us begin uh, educating our audience uh, in terms of the audience members that might not know about the term Hijra, H-I-J-R-A-H. Well, we're talking about uh, travel. In this case, uh, we're dealing with uh, travel by European Muslims who want to support ISIS or by Muslims in the Middle East who want to make it over into Europe. And, and ISIS and uh, terrorist groups, also several media personalities, as we know, or Muslim personalities, are actually giving advice to the quote-unquote refugees of how to infiltrate Western society at the moment, correct? Uh, certainly. Uh, you have a huge amount of fake passports, uh, fake certain passports that have been seized. So you have a lot of people who are pretending to be certain refugees who aren't. Um, you have a lot of uh, people who are just buying their way in. Uh, right now you can buy a Syrian passport from the Syrian government who will uh, sell it to you for around $400. So a lot of people who aren't even Syrians are coming up. And the latest poll shows that one in five Syrians uh, supports ISIS. So if Obama is taking in 10,000 refugees, that could well mean uh, 2,000 ISIS supporters. Germany taking in 800,000 uh, Syrian refugees could be 160,000 ISIS supporters. So, Daniel, you, you mentioned Obama. Uh, the figures right now, is uh, it's roughly 10,000 a month, correct? Uh, I believe it's 10,000 a year, but again, it can, uh, it can continue rising at any time. There's no real restraint. Uh, they're raising the number of refugees from, I believe, uh, 70,000 70 to 75,000 and uh, then upward. So they... Certainly Obama can use executive orders to push the ceiling upward if he wants to. Yeah, I think there's also t different categories of these particular refugees in terms of this crisis and overall the Muslim refugees that are being, uh, and the Muslims that are being brought in every month uh, in terms of what's happening. Uh, yeah, well, Christians are being detained, uh, Muslims are being allowed in. I mean, the Christians from the Middle East are being detained, Muslims are being brought in in large numbers. And explain that for us. Why would Christians be being detained if, for instance, uh, I don't think there's many ISIS uh, terrorists among Christians. Why would Muslims be being brought in and not Christians? Well, they're not concerned about terrorism. They don't want Middle Eastern Christians. You have Iraqi Christians being detained. Uh, but at the same time, they're very eager to use the UN and to bring in re Muslim refugees from these UN camps. And these are camps where Christians won't be found because it's too dangerous for them to be there. Uh, Muslim refugees have repeatedly attacked Christians, uh, not just over there, but even within inside of Europe. We had the um, recent drowning of Christians by Muslim refugees uh, near Italy. So if you go through the UN, you're not going to get Christian refugees, you're going to get Muslim refugees. And the Obama administration is doing this through the UN. Tell us um, also, in terms of the, the, the term taqiyya, which is uh, deception, lying in Islam, which is uh, le legitimate in terms of Islamic theology uh, during uh, certain times and times of war, etc. And we could arguably say that it's always legitimate uh, to lie in Islam uh, to a kafir. Uh, how is taqiyya being used right now in terms of how the quote-unquote refugees are camouflaging themselves and coming into the West? Well, first of all, they can lie about being refugees. There's also the possibility that, that they might lie about being Christians or that they might fake conversion to Christianity. But right now, they don't seem to, do, to need to do that on a large scale. Uh, we have reports of some converting, but again, I don't know how large of a phenomenon this is. Right. And what's so scary, Daniel, is, um, for instance, in terms of what the Muslim Brotherhood front groups have been allowed to do in the United States, uh, the terms like jihad, Islam, radical Islam, all of this has been wiped clean by the Obama administration out of our intelligence uh, uh, agency manuals, out of uh, the FBI training manuals. So the State Department at the moment is not even allowed to ask, to screen Muslim immigrants coming in 
It's not allowed to ask what views are about Sharia, about jihad. There's absolutely no screening going on. Isn't this a suicide? Uh, it's accomplishing what the Obama administration wants to accomplish, which is to bring in these people into the United States. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood was forced out of the Middle East in many ways. Uh, it found a warm home in Europe. It found a home in America. Uh, its base is currently not in Egypt. It's in, uh, it's in Europe. Again, uh, when the Ayatollah Khomeini originally, uh, he took refuge in France. So there's a history of these guys finding refuge in the West, exploiting it, and then going back to make the revolutions. That's what happened uh, under Obama. It's happening all over again. Mm -hmm. A very interesting uh, manual that has been found on the Internet, written by a certain Abu Saeed al-Britani, uh, who's giving Hijra advice. Uh, and, and one particular manual is called Part 7, Security Measures. Uh, this particular individual is giving advice to quote-unquote refugees, and I say quote-unquote because these are people that mean to do harm to the United States, and he's giving them certain advice. Don't get stressed if stop. Uh, keep your internet history clean. Uh, he's also telling them to shave their beards if they don't have a beard in their passport. Uh, he's telling uh, the Muslim women to take off the hijab for now while you're at the airport. There's all these tactics being taught to people who mean to do the United States harm. At the same time, we're not uh, taking any precautions about this. But it's a bit of a loaded question. Tell us about these tactics that are actually being uh, given on the Internet by these Muslim personalities. Uh, if you look, for example, at the uh, September 11 hijackers, at some of the uh, big terrorist plots, uh, the perpetrators didn't necessarily look like the classic ISIS guy. Uh, these people are capable of disguising themselves uh, in a variety of ways. Some of them can pretend to be moderate Muslims. Some of them can pretend very well to be secular. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're harmless. We like to think that uh, there are the Bin Ladens and there are the nice moderate Muslims. Uh, but uh, nice moderates can be just as easily jihadists. They can just as easily be coming to kill us. So, Daniel, some of your conclusions at the moment in terms of this problem. I mean, uh, this is crazy because on the one hand, we see ISIS boasting and bragging that it's flooding the West with its terrorists. And from our end, we are simply opening up the gates saying, come on in, no screening. This is a crazy picture. It is very insane. On the one hand, we're supposedly desperately trying to fight ISIS. On the other, we're taking in possibly uh, 2,000 ISIS sympathizers. So obviously, one is not like the other. The Obama administration is not committed to fighting ISIS if it's taking in thousands of ISIS sympathizers. And, you know, what is so scary, Daniel, too, is, uh, you know, we now regularly see ISIS coming out with a hit list, telling people in the United States, kill these people, now kill these people. The other day it was uh, uh, some business people involved in the economy. Uh, the other day it was the addresses of American military figures. Uh, you know, and this is continuing. And here's the thing. They're not talking off the top of their head. They actually know that they have people in the United States that can carry out these hits now. So this is a growing reality that Islamic hitmen are increasing on our territory. It's a very serious problem. They've very effectively crowdsourced terrorism. We've seen multiple attacks, attacks on police officers, attacks on the military, and they're able to rally these sympathizers. They're Muslim converts, they're Muslim migrants, and they're able to rally them to carry out attacks on America. We're facing a constant threat of terrorism because of that. Obama's motives. Obama is more sympathetic to Islamic terrorism, certainly the various flavors of it, than he is to the United States or to American exceptionalism. Uh, you mentioned earlier that everything had been shifted away from Islam, from terrorism. Uh, what Obama shifted it to was political Islam. The, so, uh, he created the alternative, uh, the choice between political Islam or Islamic terrorism. If we don't want political Islamic terrorism, we have to choose the Muslim Brotherhood. We have to choose political Islam. Now, the reality is that they're both terrorists. Uh, they're both out to create these horrifying Islamic theocratic terror states. Uh, but by doing that, he created this kind of false choice where we have to back the Muslim Brotherhood or we'll be attacked by terrorists. So to do that, obviously, he has to feed the terrorist groups. He has to promote these groups. 
uh, he needs Islamic terrorism to help the Muslim Brotherhood. Daniel, right now, if we see thousands, tens of thousands of Muslim quote-unquote refugees pouring into Western Europe, we know they're coming into the U.S. now, no screening, ISIS is boasting it has thousands of terrorists among these quote-unquote refugees. How can that tide be turned back? How can things be fixed once thousands of terrorists are in uh, sleeper cells all over your country? Well, for one thing, you're going to, first of all, you need border security, obviously, to prevent this from happening in the first place. What's happening in Europe should be a wake-up call. Uh, because the United States could be facing a lot more than just uh, uh, Latin American pe uh, migrants coming across the border. For example, the Fort Dix uh, conspiracy uh, terror plot, uh, three, of those, three of the plotters actually came across the border from Mexico, uh, and they were illegal aliens in the United States that were Muslims. So the, weak, the United States could be facing this. Uh, once we've got terror cells, again, we have to focus in on the mosque. We have to focus in what we began doing after September 11th, which Obama dismantled to a large degree. Uh, we have to track specific terror mosques. We have to break these up one by one. And we have to zero in on the networks. And part of these networks are Muslim Brotherhood front groups. Uh, they're Saudi uh, organizations. Uh, these groups are effectively funding, promoting, and sourcing terrorism. But Daniel, none of that is being done, and none of that can be done unless we change how the government and our culture thinks about the terror threat. Uh, we have to talk again about, uh, about a lot of what we forgot, uh, that Islamic terrorism is not just a few people misbehaving here and there. It's a larger network. It's a national network. It's an international network. We have to deal with the network instead of talking about these supposed lone wolf terrorists who in practice are acting on orders from an international network. Daniel Greenfield, thank you for joining the Glasgow Gang. Thank you for having me on. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for all that you're doing uh, in telling the truth uh, on your blog, The Point, which can be found at frontpagemag.com. Thank you, Daniel. And we'll see you next week on the Glasgow Gang.